The two most self-destructive, starseed beliefs. Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more, I hope you are very well today. I am Marie. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. For some time I have been noticing this way of thinking of the starseeds in general, and I saw the need to clear out some very destructive, and even dangerous beliefs and ideas, which I know are being generated by the New Age community, which is quite large nowadays, and has been around as such at least since the 1960s. Unfortunately, most people who listen to my YouTube channel, translate what they have learnt elsewhere to what I say here, most of the time without paying much attention to the entire context I am trying to convey, especially because I can't put so much information into every video, therefore watching several ends up being essential for anyone to understand what I am talking about. The information my group and I have been trying to pass on to you is so extensive, so large, that even after more than six years of work, we haven't been able to pass on any significant percentage of all there is, and I am well aware that we will never actually finish. But, as I said above, the main problem here is that most people interpret what I say, through the lens of what the New Age community is pushing out there, that more often than not, it has nothing to do with what I am saying, to the point where I can't entirely agree with most of it as well. This causes many people to crash, and to feel a lot of resistance to what I am saying, but so be it, because, unlike what other people claim about me and my group, we are not a new age group, I am not sharing new age anything, even though I may still agree with some of the concepts they are pushing so eloquently. I am not new age, I am telling you my first-hand everyday experience as a person not from Earth, but who has had experience living there as one of you. So I have detected at least two very dangerous beliefs that are stopping star seeds from growing in every way, be it there in the matrix of Earth, or growing spiritually, and that has caused a lot of friction with my group, especially in the past, yet now as well. The first one is the concept that your life was pre-planned before you incarnated. This concept is being pushed all over the New Age community, and I believe the person who has pushed it the most is Dolores Cannon, whom I deeply respect and admire, and I will use her as an example for what I will say next, simply because I know that so many researchers and New Age gurus base their information and beliefs on her work almost blindly, as if it were gospel. Yet there are many things in her work that I cannot agree with, but it is not a simple case of agreeing or disagreeing, with a dualistic mentality of one thing or the other, as these subjects tend to be extremely complex and may change from one point of view to the next, even while being studied by the very same person. Cannon's work is based on hypnotic regressions, which are useful yet not entirely reliable, see, Cannon refused to regress people who have been regressed before by other researchers. I find this interesting because she refused to work with those because they already had hypnotherapist implanted concepts that would alter the final results, as if she did not do the exact same, simply because she was also regressing people. This caused her results would also be biased in her favor, because all the regressions would be influenced by her, no matter how careful she was, not to unwillingly implant anything onto the subjects, and I know she was very careful not to do so. Her refusal to regress anyone who had been regressed by another researcher forced all her results to be congruent with one another. Another problem is that even when, or even if the results would be 100% accurate, they would only convey a partial understanding of the complexities of the afterlife. And this is where the concept that states that your life is pre-planned comes in. From my point of view, Cannon's conclusions are correct, they are perfectly valid, 
yet incomplete. People tend to interpret her statement as if there were only one life plan for every person, for every soul, in such a way that it even defeats the existence of free will. From my point of view, a soul chooses its preset life plan, and also has free will. This is because it can jump from one personal timeline to another, where each one of them is fixed, as in a fixed set of sequential unfolding events, which the subject soul could have observed and even foreseen before incarnating. Yet it is not only one timeline, there are an infinite number of them, and the soul can choose to jump from one to another, at any logical point in his or her life, as the possibilities unfold. This is the concept of quantum jumping, where the subject has a sudden change of mind, mentality, frame ideas, and so on, which causes a strong change in personal existential vibration, which in turn causes the soul to stop being compatible with its current timeline, sequence of events, and become vibrationally compatible with another much more positive one. And I know this concept of quantum jumping from one destructive timeline to another much more positive one, is real and doable, because I have been in that situation, I lived a huge quantum jump that completely turned my life around. Fairly recently I was a shy skinny frightened girl, feeling useless in life with nothing to offer, and a burden to others, and sinking in my insecurities, thinking I had no future. And today, only two years later, I don't even need to tell you who I have become. Get this straight, there is nothing in me that you do not have, we have the same potential, so you can do the same, and you can turn your life around as I did, and if you are thinking that I have an unfair advantage because I live in a holistic society full of potential, and free stuff and starships, think again, as things are not as nice and as free of problems as you are led to think. And that is the second most destructive idea star seeds hold, and I will talk about it later on. Coming back to the first destructive starseed belief, the concept that life plans are set in stone and that each soul incarnates to have that hard unwanted experience, causes a strong spiritual stagnation, where the subject loses his or her life drive and motivation to work and fight for better circumstances. Thinking that one's life is preset, because the soul chose it from a point of view where time and space hold no value, therefore can look ahead and see what experiences it will have during its next incarnation, causes the subject to fall into a deterministic helpless victim mentality. As I said above, it can be pre-planned and also changed to another pre-planned different set of events, a different life timeline. So canon is right, and not, as things in my understanding are more complicated than a simple black or white approach, as you mustn't think in duality terms, because you are not a computer hugging its ones and zeros. For me, this means that even though from a much more expanded point of view lives are pre-planned, from any practical point of view, from our experience within one, we do have free will and complete control over what we will experience. All we must do is take advantage of every opportunity that comes along, to start moving the rudder of our lives in the desired direction, and if there are apparently no opportunities, then we must make them. Each small step will lead to more opportunities opening, which will lead to even more of them as we move along. But to be effective at this, you must also remove the things and people in your life who are setting you back, making you fall back into the same thought and behavior dynamics you always had, so you must change your environment, especially your social one, as you are the average of the people with whom you interact with the most. You must associate with people who feed your soul and your self-esteem, as you feed theirs as well, and not be close to people who criticize you, and constantly point out your shortcomings, because their purpose is to drag you down so they can narcissistically feel uplifted with no effort. That sort of people, push others down to feel above them, instead of focusing on growing themselves, 
also as they help their loved ones grow with them, in a healthy nurturing symbiosis. For all practical matters, your life is not preset, therefore you can change it at any time, and this does not contradict canon, and I am not contradicting myself either. The second most destructive starseed belief is that life outside Earth is easier, and therefore they desperately want to be physically extracted by their star family. Yes, Earth is said to be the most difficult place to incarnate on, but that is generalizing, because as there is a lot of hardship there on Earth, there is also love, progress and well-being, as those are the result of the life each soul has managed to generate for itself, exactly as I described in the first point above. Same way, outside Earth, there is also a lot of hardship and problems, and not only perfection and happiness, and those problems can be as hard and as terrible as those found on Earth. Life in physicality is always hard, and seeing it in a gruesome way, every one of us who is alive is destined to die, the only question is how. This forces us to give meaning to our lives, making the suffering worthwhile, because suffering with no meaning is true hell, whereas, suffering with a meaning and a purpose is bearable, and even worthwhile. While you are alive, wherever you are there will be suffering, on earth and not, that does not matter, what counts is what are you going to do with your suffering. Being extracted by a starship is not the answer to your problems, in fact, it can make your life a lot worse, and it can cause more of them, to an unbearable degree and extent. As an example of this, the feelings of guilt for having left loved ones behind ends up eating the self-esteem and the consciousness of the extracted. Then the feeling of being a failure also ends up causing more sadness and lack of self-esteem, as you strongly feel that you are incapable of facing the situations you set yourself on earth, this causes many souls to desire to reincarnate on earth again, even when they were extracted. Extracting also causes the subject to learn to quit, to take the easy road to immediate satisfaction, therefore losing the drive for self-improvement. Asking for extraction is no other than more of the old saying that the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Souls go to wherever their vibration takes them, so no one can ever get lost, that is a universal impossibility, because you cannot exist in a place that does not correspond to your vibration. You may strongly feel that living on earth is most definitely not in agreement with your vibration, but the ugly truth is that it is, or you simply wouldn't be there now. But that experience on earth will also cause you to be very clear with what you desire next, and if that is not to be on earth and return to your star family, that is exactly what you will get. Very few people can be extracted, and of those few who have, almost all of them have felt strong remorse and repentance, Many have also expressed their desperation to return, not only because they feel a lot of guilt and inadequacy, but because life is also hard outside Earth, because it is only more life. And there is also Matrix up here. Life outside Earth, as a Lyrian space human, is not heaven, and your wants and needs are far from met, because you must work as hard as on Earth if not harder. Things are different with different circumstances, but while you are alive, life is hard wherever you are physically, because the world you live in is only a reflection of who you are inside, there is no external reality, as it is only the mirror of who you are. And this holds a deep meaning, because it means that you are the true master of your reality, therefore where you are is irrelevant, as you can generate and create the life you want on earth, or outside of it all the same. Even though life on earth is said to be the hardest place to live in, you can generate your desired life and reality all the same. I have heard that many starseeds claim that being extracted is part of their life plan, and although this may be correct, strictly speaking, more often than not, it is only a lame excuse for escapism, especially from themselves, 
and their inability to face and fix their own lives on Earth. This also goes for lifespans using technology, such as those people in immersion pods, who supposedly planned everything that they would experience, as even from the pod, they can steer their lives in the same way as if they had incarnated from source, therefore their life outcomes are not fixed either. The belief that they will be extracted, therefore fixing all their existential problems that way, is as destructive as the first one I talked about in this video, and I could also say that this second one is a derivative or a variant of the first, as it causes the same unwanted destructive side effects. Extraction is not the answer, nor the solution to your problems, as you take them with you wherever you go, because the life and problems you want to run away from are only reflections of who you are. When a starseed bases his or her life expectancies and plans on being extracted, it no longer has the drive and the strength to move forward in its present life on Earth. It again causes them to stagnate and only daydream about the day of extraction when all his or her problems supposedly will be solved, according to them, because in reality, they are only trading one set of big problems for another fresh set of bigger ones. Asking for extraction is not the answer to your problems, nor is it the solution to any one of them. What is, is facing your present life and challenges, wherever you are. People are not extracted to save them from their problems, they are extracted when they have managed to solve their problems, and this is an important fact. Souls go to Earth to learn, so they go back to their star families when they have graduated when they have nothing more to learn that is relevant to them, and they may return to their star families by physical extraction by starship, or by reincarnating after their life there has ended, but no one ever gets lost. Therefore extraction must be offered, and not asked nor demanded, because this attitude also causes another set of problems, as the denial for extraction is often taken as rejection from their star families, as treason, or as a sign of falsehood, and the inexistence of their star families. When they are also not taking into consideration all the Galactic Federation rules and regulations their star families must navigate, before making such an extraction even feasible. Demanding extraction also causes deep feelings of anger and frustration if denied, causing them to be even less extractable. This is if they are even openly denied, because more often than not, their stellar family will not be clear with them, while they may even promise an extraction that may never take place, simply because of their non-human, people-pleasing mentality, that often gets them into much trouble. Or simply because they do not have the balls or the ovaries to say things as they are, but I do have them. Don't get me wrong. People do get extracted, but they come up as winners, in full flag and with their heads up high, and not as lame losers, whimpering along, while they complain about everything, except about their own inability to face themselves. I am sorry if I sound harsh, but I speak the truth. As always, thank you for watching my video, and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. It helps this channel grow a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love, your friend. Marie Swarth.